Aloha and welcome to The Art of Life. I am your host, Willow Chang Alion. We broadcast live every Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. here in the wonderful heart of downtown at Pioneer Plaza. If you can't watch us live, as you might be doing, you can always check us out on YouTube. We have archival footage there. And also check out our page on Facebook called The Art of Life with Willow Chang. Today is a special occurrence because I've had the luxury of having you and me all to myself for two episodes in a row. And this is going to be part two of a Valentine to Honolulu, giving you in total over a hundred visual reasons why I love Hawaii. Even though she's my home, I still have a lifelong love affair with her. As uh, mentioned before, I would say that 90% of these images, maybe more, 95% copyright free images that I have taken, a few of them uh, taken by others if I'm in the picture. That would be pretty obvious, but I'll state it for journalistic integrity. So let's get the show going because we've got a lot of images on what is there to love about Honolulu. Alrighty, part two. My goodness, look at that. In glorious bloom, we have flowering trees. Now, you might think, well, in Hawaii, you have trees that flower year-round. You don't have seasons. Aha! <laughs> you're mistaken. Yes, you're right that we do have trees that flower year-round, but we have seasons. They're very subtle. They're very refined. They're very understated, but they are undeniable. In spring, we have showering, flowering trees like everybody else. This is something that looks like a shower tree, but technically is not called the shower tree. And you can find these all throughout your drive through Honolulu, uh, in Greater Downtown, in Kaimuki, uh, Foster Botanical Gardens. Be on the lookout. There are these amazing, um, vibrant yellow blooms that just ignite the, the sky with color and energy. You can, this one was taken actually by Church of the Crossroads on, uh, near the university, so check that out. Our beautiful showering flowering trees what's not to like with the beautiful sight of a swaying lantern in the wind this is something that you'll see all throughout the summertime here in the islands and this is the advent of the obon season we will dedicate a whole episode maybe two if i can get away with that to the obon season which is celebrating the dearly departed uh, with food music dance um, and reflection as well as ceremonial uh, procedures with the buddhist practice and i always have found there's so much romance in a paper lantern a long time ago back in the stone ages they used to string these pink and white lanterns at the famous royal hawaiian hotel in their garden and I loved going to Waikiki and walking in the garden at nighttime, seeing these paper lanterns. I hope that they will consider bringing it back, because there's something romantic about paper lanterns dancing in the wind. We're still on trees and things that you see in the sky. This is the beautiful jacaranda tree, which is not native to Hawaii. It's actually from Africa, and someone had the great idea to bring it to Hawaii. So even though technically that's a visitor tree, maybe an invasive species, it's beautiful regardless. And it's purple, uh, lavender, and violet blossoms. Um, usually springtime, you see them a lot in upcountry in Maui. So if you go to Maui up near Ulapalakua um, and, and what have you, of course there are lavender farms and, and ranching and all kinds of beautiful things as well. But these trees, I think, are fantastic. You can find a jacaranda tree, sometimes in bloom, right across the street from Thomas Square. It's true. Go check it out. Since we mentioned Maui, uh, we're transitioning into some wonderful lavender blooms. And there is a cottage industry of creating lavender-based products right here in the heart of Hawaii. So I'm all for biodiversity and um, small companies making it big and they're the Ali'i farms are just wonderful. This is not a paid advertisement, but I always enjoy making a priority to go there. And this is where I took the picture. There's a little busy bee doing its work, getting all those flowers ready for the next phase and making honey and sweet smelling things. So flowers, what's not to like? Waiting for the next image here. Ah. Now, what is the beginning of a new year without a fantastic dragon dance? Most of you have probably seen a lion dance. 
I'm not going to say that the lion dance is any way pedestrian. It's just a little more accessible. Um, you need less people. You probably only need two people and people to play the drum. The dragon is a little more elaborate, um, and it has a different feel altogether, other than being a different creature and a mythical creature at that. And so since it's suspended over the air and held by all of these dancing poles and people underneath it, and it has the opportunity to be very serpentine in its movement, it's just a really cool thing to see. And Chinese New Year is one of the few times that you see it. This is at the Chinese New Year parade that they have right down Hotel Street. And you, if you were quick enough to see the historic Club Hubba Hubba neon sign in the background, a little piece of old school Hawaii history there for our servicemen and visitors who frequented the bar in the 1940s. This here in the foreground is, of course, the lovely, lovely and fuzzy lion head. He's uh, paying a greeting and probably being paid handsomely by all the onlookers, giving money as a donation in hopes for prosperity for the new year and good luck. I think we might have a few more pictures of Chinese New Year. We have somehow, this year was interesting because they supersized Chinese New Year from what has been a two weekend event to almost a month long extravaganza. So if you miss one weekend, chances are you'll have a chance to catch up and see it the following weekend. Um, usually mid-January to the beginning of February, always following in accordance with the Lunar New Year, because that's how that rolls. Alrighty. And then again, there's Club Hubba Hubba and the Dragon. Aw, yeah. Gotta love those bright neon yellow shirts. They could almost double as uh, public workers on the roads. You can see them at nighttime. It's, it's pretty extreme <laughs> and fabulous. Okay, moving right along. What do we have in the queue? Ah, oh, speaking of visitors. So our visitor industry is not limited to people. In fact, we have this lovely bugger who comes every year to spend uh, Hawaii, uh, spend winter here in Hawaii, and this is the golden plover, one of many plovers that go back and forth uh, from Alaska to Hawaii. Oh my goodness, and its wings are tired. And every blue moon, you have a little plover who decides to not go back. They're a little straggler. They stay in the islands. And I get a thrill seeing these guys coming and going. Um, they're just beautiful. The sandpipers and the plovers, you can see them all throughout grassy lawns, open spaces in front of the libraries, uh, sometimes at the beach. And they have a very distinctive bird call as well. And they're pretty territorial, so if you have a chance, go outside and watch them, because if there are two that are close by, one who will be showing their dominance will boop, 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 chase the other bird right out of there. It's like he's saying, get out of here, bottle. This is my space. So some dogs um, and animals mark their territory with bodily fluids. These birds just chase you out of there. Get out of here. This is my turf until they go back to Alaska. You're like, I can't believe she just said that. I did. That's how we roll. Alrighty. This might be the view that the plover sees in flight. And look at this skyline. Our skyline, which is going to be changing in the very near future if 22 condos are built in Kaka'ako, in addition to all of the other things, including rail. So enjoy this view while you can, my friends. One of the things that many people say when they come to Hawaii from other places, because I ask them, what surprised you about Hawaii? Almost nine times out of ten, the first thing they say is, I'm so surprised there are so many buildings here. They think we're in the little grass shack. Well, those days are long gone. Um, so, But it's a nice, comforting scene to see when you're on the airplane coming home to see the Honolulu City Lights, as the Beamer Brothers sang about. Our next image is, for our architecture buffs, a picture of the should be historic Wimberley House. This is nestled in deep in the valley in Manoa, and I honestly didn't know it was here. I stumbled upon it on a drive and had the audacity to go and knock on the door, and Mrs. Wimberley herself actually invited me in and talked story with me for a good 40 to 50 minutes. It is an amazing, beautiful, mid-century modernist architecture. This photo does not do it any justice um, in actuality, if you wanted to really showcase the house, the tree would probably have to go. But the tree uh, provides shade and, and 
cools the house down and it's Manoa Valley, it's wet, things grow. But it's amazing, you have these cantilevered um, suspended staircase, open-ended staircases and beautiful windows and it is remarkable. I'm hoping that it will be on a historic preservation. Um, who knows, fingers crossed. Transitioning here, also an image from Hawaii. This is the Chinese cemetery up in Manoa Valley. I have relatives and ancestors buried up there, but even if I didn't have that familial connection, this is a very beautiful site, and if you haven't been there, I implore you to go check it out. You might think, how strange to go to a cemetery, but there is a fantastic um, large sign engraved in marble that explains the feng shui of this place, and when the Chinese immigrants came to Hawaii, they looked at different locations on the islands for feng shui purposes of what would be an ideal place to have a cemetery, and this was their final decision. And there's many more details about it, um, but it's just an amazing place, and you can really see how Chinese and Hawaiian things are integrated. One of the most obvious being all the planting of the tea leaves, which is a tree that helps ward off bad energy. So it's a unique place, it's a very peaceful place, and it's a very beautiful place. Hawaii has no shortage of beautiful places, and if you long to see something that is open air, en plein air, um, with the absence of a lot of structures and buildings, you can simply get in your car and drive to the other side of town. So here we are out in Punalu'u, and isn't this beautiful? This is at dusk. Um, I had several photos, but since I'm trying to get through about 60 pictures, I had to edit. But uh, adjacent to this, there was a hukilau. There was a Hawaiian-style group fishing going on with, by net. Um, and it was just magnificent to see people fishing in the old school way. As you know from my previous one, I'm not a fish eater, uh, but I can appreciate that tradition perseveres and there's something very beautiful and meaningful in that. So if you haven't gone for a ride around the island, hey, it's time to go holo holo. Get in your car and go, go, go. This is also taken on the same day and this is low tide. And uh, I just thought it was fantastic between the, the coral reef and the limu, the seaweed, the moon uh, high in the sky and its reflection in the water there. Um, it's just magical. And look at the colors. The colors are so beautiful. They're so evocative and romantic and gentle and soft and welcoming. And it's the type of thing that even if you don't take a photo, chances are you're going to remember that because it moves you on this very soulful and spiritual level. At least it did for me. I am a sucker for a sunset, and I can be honest with you, if you have the opportunity to see many sunsets, you'll realize that no two sunsets are the same. That might sound obvious, but you'd be surprised. A lot of people say, eh, you've seen one sunset, and why do you have to see another? Well, we'll see several sunsets, and this was, if I recall, the final sunset of 2012 the final sunset of 2012. It was exceedingly clear that day, as you can tell, and, and just magnificent. The sun is not totally set, but it's, it's going down, baby, and it is just so beautiful. It's very beautiful. I'm a romantic at heart. Waiting for the next image. Ah, kind of a strange transition there, but now some of you might think, oh, interesting, we went from Hawaii to Japan. <laughs> Actually, you're in the heart of Kalihi, and so this is one of our Shinto temples. I love to go there on New Year's for noodles and mochi and otomori and blessings and, and what have you. Um, this was before there was the big fireworks ban, so you might see less of this type of activity if you're doing it legally with the fireworks, but I thought it was so magical to have the, um, the, the Shinto, um, the rope, with the little pieces of paper hanging there, suspended, and the lantern, and just the smoke. It was a very filmic kind of moment. I almost feel like I'm in Blade Runner, kind of. Need something flying overhead, but it's pretty cool. We are returning to internal spaces that are beautiful. I've mentioned it before, and as you can tell, I have a lifelong love affair with the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. This is after they had done their renovation. Some of their things I like, some of the things not so much. But I think overall they did try to retain the feeling of a, a Spanish Moresco feel um, and all the opulence of the era of the late 
20s and early 30s. And here's the hallway. If you're patient and you can wait, you can take your photos and it will look like nobody's there. That's just, <laughs> that's a fantasy because there's actually quite a few people at the hotel. But I, I'm the type of person I will wait and wait and wait until no one's there to take the picture that I would like. And I love this place because just like going to the Shinto temple, it's you take a little portal into a different time, um, a different space and time. And that's something that's very unique in Hawaii that we have to hang on to because a lot of times these kinds of places are gone. They just get torn down. Alrighty, back to the great outdoors. Back to diversity. If you have not seen the lion that dances during the Okinawan festival or at the Bon Dance, you're missing out. They're playful and they're magical and they roll around and they have a completely different energy and vibe than their Chinese brothers. So for the love of God and all things holy, don't mix up an Okinawan lion with the Chinese lion. They're not the same. They're not the same. Trust me on this one. Okinawan Festival is usually the first weekend of September. It's a huge, gigantic hoedown. All kinds of food, all kinds of grinds. Um, the yagura in the center there, and live music, and bone dance, and all kinds of cultural fun stuff. And it's been fascinating to see in my lifetime not only the cultural renaissance um, and renewal of Hawaiian culture and language, but also simultaneously a resurgence of interest in the Okinawan culture and language. It is happening and it's up, it's on the up and up. I'm hoping to bring some guests in to discuss this, but it's very, very interesting. And Hawaii and Okinawa have a lot more in common than you would think. Though it's a different show for a different time, but trust me, there's something to it. It's really fun. I say that they're just the funkiest people in Japan, and that's a compliment. Alrighty, back to the great outdoors. Now you might think, hmm, this looks like Monet. That's what I thought, but it's actually twilight and Waikiki, and these are the lights dancing off of the water. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it's just, there's magic everywhere. For every person who slags on Waikiki, go there at twilight, go there at dusk, go there early in the morning, and see how many beautiful things there are, because the magic is still there. And uh, I'm just a sucker for these kinds of things. Light, movement, the great outdoors. Okay, obviously this is not a self-portrait. <laughs> or a selfie. I personally can't stand that term. <laughs> I think it has an air of obnoxiousness to it. Um, someone else took this picture, and this is me covering my ears because there's a lot of fireworks going off, and this is at the Shinto temple in Kalihi. So again, it looks like you're in Japan, but you're in the heart of Honolulu. It's pretty fabulous, and you can ring the bell and be blessed. It's all good. <laughs> Clap your hands and ring the bell. <laughs> Alrighty. There's all kinds of ohana in Hawaii. And the thing that's really cool is you don't have to be of the blood usually to be accepted um, into the ohana. I am proud to say that about a pinky's worth of me is still Native American, Susquehannock tribe from my mother's side. And something that we've done ever since I can remember is go to the intertribal powwow. We have a back episode uh, in October of last year, you can look at it, where we had Chief Rock Sino as a guest, who was also performing at that at last year's powwow. And here you have people from different tribes and nations meeting together to celebrate their rich culture, their songs, their food, their stories. And at the end of the powwow, they invited me to come and take a picture. And there at the far bottom right in teal, I'm in southwestern dress because I don't have something appropriate for being a northwest, uh, northeast Indian. But uh, it's something really wonderful, and it's free. It's open to the public. It's the first weekend every October, and I would encourage you to go and pay respects and learn something about the Native American culture. There's infinite wisdom there, and it's very accessible and very open. I'm not really sure why this picture is showing up now because this was supposed to be last, but that's okay. Where else but in Hawaii could two little porcupines find love? 
snug as a bug in a rug. This is actually at the Honolulu Zoo, and I couldn't resist. And you're like, why are you showing us their okole? But isn't it cute? <laughs> Look at them side by side. I have no idea if they're male and female, or male and male, or female and female. And in my mind, it doesn't really matter. But I just thought that it was so cute. Two little porcupines taking a siesta together. So if you're old school, you're going to know what this is. But this is one of the things that's kind of disappearing in Hawaii. So I'm going to title this picture Old School Hawaii. It's not the mailboxes. I know that they're trying to cut back on the U.S. Postal Service. It's actually the glass jars underneath, the glass bottles filled with water. I wish you could call in because if someone could tell me what this is, I might have to like give you something. I don't know. Some cookies from the cookie corner upstairs. They're highly addictive. But since you can't call in, I'm going to let you in on the big secret. There was a belief back in the day that if you would fill these large glasses of water, I think these look like they're apple juice. Sometimes you would see the best foods or the mayonnaise jar. Fill them with water and put them on your lawn. The idea is the dog would see its reflection and be so scared and would not poop on your yard. I can't explain it. I don't know if there's any scientific thing to back this, but I know as a child growing up in Manoa Valley, every single house had these glass jars filled with water and placed on their yard. So if you're really old school, you're going to know exactly what that's about, whether you believe it or not. Here is an image to give you, again, a visual example that not all sunsets are the same. And here is something that is also very much a reflection of the type of activity you see on the beach when the sun's going down. I think you have one guy there, he's probably adjusting his surf shorts, someone's getting out of the ocean, and uh, there's a lot of activity on the beach as the sun goes down. It's a very magical time. You'll hear me use that adjective frequently because if the shoe fits. Um, but I think you should check it out. Now, we have to take that short little break, but stay tuned because there's a lot of images. Like I said, we have 60 images. We probably have gone through maybe a quarter of them. This is The Art of Life, and I'm your host, Willow Chang Alion. Castle and Cook, Hawaii. Investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Collateral Analytics. Empowering the real estate industry to make better informed property investment decisions. The Foreign Trade Zone. Bringing the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone programs to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. Galen Ho a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, incorporating diverse perspectives to design a flexible and forward-looking energy strategy. Hawaii Energy, the state's energy and efficiency program created to help Hawaii's residents and businesses adopt a clean energy lifestyle. Hawaii Gas, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Hawaii Pacific Health, bringing technology and teamwork together to transform healthcare in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, attached to DBED, is the state's leading technology agency. The Scheidler Family Foundation, supporting educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tank. Aloha and welcome back to The Art of Life. I'm your host, Willow Chang Alion, and we have our episodes on YouTube. We stream live on the internet, and we also have a great Facebook page called The Art of Life. So if you have free time, send a link, pass it on, spread the word, give us some insights on what you think of the show, or if you have suggestions for us, we're always happy to hear what you have to say. Anyway, moving right along, this is part two of an episode entitled Valentine to Hawaii. And basically, it's a visual um, journey through things that make Hawaii unique, of images that I've taken and things that I enjoy, and I certainly hope that you enjoy them as well. Sometimes when you live in a place for any length of time, you get used to things, or as local people like to say, used to too. 
and you don't see things for the beauty that they are. My hope is that by showing you some of these everyday things and seasonal things that you'll be able to go back and fall in love with Hawaii all over again. So let's see something lovely. My goodness. Now here we have the Night Blooming Sirius and this is a wonderful succulent. Uh, it technically might be a cactus. I might have to do my research on that. But um, I believe originally it was from Mexico and it has these fantastic blooms that only open at night time and then they wilt away and wither away during the day. You usually will see these in bloom in the summertime, most likely in the month of July. The best place to see it, well if you've ever seen Blue Hawaii with Elvis you would know because when he was tested to become a tour guide they said, where would you take somebody to see the night blooming Sirius? And Elvis said, Ponahol School. He said it just like that. He said, Punahou School, that's on the corner of Wilder and Punahou Street. Perhaps you might know it's Carnival, among other things. Our president went to school there. It's President Obama. Anyway, the Night Blooming Series is there, and my gosh, does it put on a show. You have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blooms. And here's something interesting. I have actually seen bees at nighttime in the Night Blooming Series, and I thought that bees took a snooze at nighttime. So, there is something to be said about the busy bee. They live up to their name. Another reason to love Hawaii, art in public places. Now this technically is not something that was funded by the public like our 1% tax that helps uh, erect statues and have art in public places. This was actually an installation that was outside of the Honolulu Museum of Art but I will let you know, probably for the rest of my life, I'm going to call it the Art Academy because it was known that for so long. And last year, was it last year? Oh, I stand corrected. It was in 2012, they invited an artist, forgive me, I forget the name right now, but I will put it on the website, who created these magical, organic structures with materials resource right here in Hawaii into these fanciful I don't know what you would call them. I just like to think of them as birds' nests. I'm sure everybody has a different idea of what they are, but uh, clearly three-dimensionally you could go inside of them, and they were up there for nearly a year, and just simply fantastic. Right now the art that's showing is, uh, there are two metal horses by Deborah Butterfield, um, wonderful artist as well, so check that out. That's something new under the new direction at the Honolulu Museum of Art is that they're creating these works of arts outside for people to see. So when you drive down Baratania or if you're on the bus or going for a walk, you can go and check it out. It's very accessible and beautiful. Little dramatic pause. <laughs> From the great outdoors to the great indoors. If you happen to catch in our October episode our interview with DJ Nocturna, you'll know exactly what this picture references. But if you haven't, well, Hawaii is home to sunshine and surfing and plate lunch and all those things. And we also have probably the only ongoing continuous uh, contest for Count Dracula and also Miss Vamp. These are pageants, if you may call them that, for both men and women to compete to have the title of Count Dracula or Miss Vamp. This is clearly the Count Dracula side of things. Look at these men in their various gothic and romantic and uh, alternative finery wearing silks and brocades and rubber and leather and all kinds of things. Um, it w I'm glad I wasn't a judge, that's all I have to say. I was actually there and it's incredibly entertaining and they're completely serious about this. No one goes in there as a joke. They all want to have that title as Count Dracula and uh, hats off to Nocturna for creating such an interesting and fun thing for us to go to every year. Another really local style image. Please remove your shoes before entering. Now this is a custom. Different people will have different takes on this. Some believe that it is a a Japanese custom because it's practiced in Japan to take your shoes off. 
I learned recently that when you do that, you would face your shoes in the direction of going out so you can step right into your shoes. Some people say this is local style. You take off your shoes um, or Hawaiian style. I think we can all say now it's become a local custom. So regardless of where you're from or what your ethnicity is, this is something that is when in Rome. When in Rome, you take your shoes off. It would be considered really poor form to wear shoes in somebody's house unless they give you permission to wear shoes in the house. I know this kind of freaks my mainland friends out. They get a little nervous about it, but don't worry. The toe jams will subside. It's better to do, do the right thing, be pono, and take off your shoes. I remember in our house uh, across the street when I was growing up, we always knew when the tunes were having a big party because I could look out the window and in front of their door I'd see about 25 pairs of slippers. And that's how, <laughs> that's how I knew that my neighbors were having a party other than the fact that there was no parking on the street. Alrighty, moving right along. This is an image some of you might have seen when I was promoting today's show on Facebook. And another reason to love Hawaii is we have some phenomenal masters of ikebana, um, the sogetsu style, uh, here in Hawaii. There are classes at various locations everywhere from the Japanese Cultural Center to the Honolulu Museum of Art at Linikona, and fantastic showcases with the um, floral show that happens at the museum. You can also see it at the Honolulu Museum of Art. You can also sometimes see um, fantastic floral arrangements at Newman Marcus, and Various locations around town celebrate the artistry um, of Ikebana. And there's a true, it's where science and math and art really intersect. It's quite complex and it's always beautiful. And I enjoy it so much. These are two examples of just really cutting edge, beautiful Ikebana. And they have competitions for this as well locally. Everything from People have the same amount of flowers and the same materials and the same amount of time to create something to things that are thematic, things that are color-based and what have you. Um, and equally interesting are to the comments given by the judges. It really helps train both your eye and your mind to read that. Here we are continuing with referencing some of the shows we've had with The Art of Life. A few weeks ago we had Mike Shanahan. We're giving a shout out to him. He's in Spain right now. Um, but when he isn't in Spain, he is the director of the Visitor Affairs and also the Planetarium. And on that show, we talked about the wonderful science hall and how you can walk through this tunnel with this day glow imagery. And this is um, a representation of the Kumulipo, which is the creation chant and the Hawaiian understanding of how the universe was created. And we said that this is probably like the number one photo op. And obviously, I couldn't resist either. I probably took 25 pictures in that tunnel of all of the amazing creations that the students had created. It's, it's really wonderful, charming. You must go if you haven't. If you haven't, what are you waiting for? So you might find it of interest that so many of these things uh, depict the evening and the nighttime, from the night blooming Sirius to the lanterns and the, the light on the water. But that's really to get the point across that Hawaii is not only about sunshine. And we have a great nightlife and a great deal of things to do um, at all hours of the night here in Hawaii, from 24-hour stores and restaurants, um, clubs and concerts and what have you. This is something that I think many people look forward to. At least a good 15,000 people in person show up at Alamoana Beach Park on Memorial Day, and they celebrate Memorial Day with this floating lantern ceremony. I regret that the pictures and the images are really tiny and really small, but trust me, those are all hundreds of lanterns that are launched in a memoriam for people who have passed on, not only um, people you're related to, but people who have been subject to war, or famine, crises, typhoons, natural disaster, you name it. It's just a nice way to reflect on those who've crossed over. It's kind of, a, it, it begins in many ways, the Obon season, there's just a nice timing. And it's a nice way to have this moment of reflection before we go into full year with summertime and all of the fun that summer brings. Around a similar time of year in June, we have King Kamehameha Day and we have the Kamehameha Day Parade, which is just simply wonderful. 
It really is. And I implore you, if you have never seen this in person, oh my goodness, you must. If you go to the King Kamehameha statue that is across from Iolani Palace, you will see him draped with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of flowers that have all been strung together in lei, and, um, and lei and haku that have been placed at the base there. And it's just magnificent. It's a beautiful way to remember the leader who united the islands. It's lovely. Alrighty. Also around the same time of year, you can go to the 50th State Fair. And I love me a fair, I really do. Um, this is now held at the stadium, right? I wish they would repave the stadium. Dear Santa, please repay, re please repave the parking lot at Aloha Stadium. It's pretty nasty, so wear shoes that uh, will ensure that you won't trip. Otherwise, you're going to have a knee full of rocks and gravel. Um, but you can see crazy things like pig racing <laughs> and ride the rides and have malasada and all those good things. And it goes on for a whole month. Every weekend for a month, it's the 50th State Fair. And it's just a lot of fun. It's really of the people. If you haven't gone, go once. I usually go on Pepsi Day because my inner Chinese likes to save money. And like if you bring in an e empty Pepsi can, you can get in for free. So there's your little money saving tip. Here we have the moon rising overhead on the beach. And uh, what's not to like? Diamond Head. It's iconic. Um, it's the place that has launched a million dreams. People see that and they think, wow, Hawaii, Waikiki Beach, I would really love to be there. Now, right around the same neighborhood that you would have found Ainahau, um, where Princess Ka'iulani had her home, and would hang out with Robert Louis Stevenson and the Peacocks, and they would discuss things, and he would write poems for her. I mean, people, you can't make this stuff up. It's so wonderful. Okay, clearly a picture that was not taken by me, but a picture taken of me. Journalistic uh, disclosure there. I'm in my element rocking out at the Bon Dance. This one is on Sheraton Street. Each temple has their own flavor, their own little customs, their own different foods, their own musicians that show up. You might think they're all the same. I can assure you, going every weekend to a different temple, they're not. They're not the same. You might see some of the same cast of characters. Guilty. Um, but it's a lot of fun. You don't have to be Buddhist. You don't have to be Japanese. Um, you can just go for the fun. You can watch. You don't have to know the dances. You can watch and follow, and eventually you're going to pick it up. But I would recommend it. Check it out. It's the Obon season. It happens in the summertime. We'll take a short break. And we'll be back with part three of part two of 100 Visual Reasons to Love Honolulu. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia in Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Olalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And Hi. on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Aloha and welcome to The Art of Life. I'm your host, Willow Chang Alion. Just to remind you, we have back episodes on YouTube and on the Art of Life page on Facebook. So please check out those other episodes because we've mentioned quite a few of our guests and topics. Everyone from DJ Nocturna, uh, George Garcia, Mike Shanahan at the Bishop Museum and so forth. So if you want to find out some more information about that, you can get much more in depth with those previous episodes. Here we are, getting back to the fun and the games. Oh, okay. Back to Invasive Species, Part 10. 
you're like, you shouldn't be supporting this, but you know what? At this point, they're pretty integrated into the system. This is the wonderful and lowly mongoose. And if you don't know about this, the mongoose has a very interesting story of how they were introduced to the islands. They were brought in to attempt to control the rats when we had uh, cane, sugar cane, and much more agriculture going on. So they brought in a whole bunch of mong... Can we say mongoose? I've heard the term is mongooses, which always bothers me, but I'm going to just say mongoose. They brought in some mongoose to deal with the rat situation only to find out that they keep different schedules. It's the best scenario if you have a roommate you don't like, because the mongoose is awake during the day, diurnal, and the rats are awake at night, nocturnal. That's when you have to make the sound. So now we have a whole bunch of mongoose that don't control the rat population, but they're plentiful. And the picture that we had was a little mongoose and a baby mongoose ready to go and raid the trash cans at Honama Bay. So if you hang out at Honama Bay pretty close to closing time when the sun starts setting, guess who comes out of the woodwork looking at the buffet called the trash can? That's right, the little mongoose. And they're very cute, in my opinion. I'm a fan of rodents. <laughs> Alrighty, moving right along. This is someone who is not a rodent. This is Jason Tom, beatbox extraordinaire. Hoping to get him on the show. He's a man in demand. He's very busy. However, he's in the mix because, again, going back to that previous uh, um, topic of our artists here in Hawaii, how we have lots of different people who do amazing things, everything from modern dance to muralist to taiko artist, um, what have you, tango, beatboxing. We have all the good stuff that you'd expect to find in a larger metropolitan city. It's just that we're a little bit smaller. And so hoping to get Jason Tom in the mix so you can hear him. Uh, back to Bishop Museum. We had talked about the gigantic bug show. Uh, and Mike Shanahan was responsible for helping select bringing that show to the islands. It was pretty fantastic. I would have gotten right up to the bug and had my, take, my photo taken with the bug. But they did have some, um, some little like fencing or signs that encouraged you or discouraged you to not get closer to the grasshopper and the gigantic cockroach and what have you. But it was really cool. And if, for those of you who remember, when you're driving on H1 and you're going past Bishop Museum, if you look over to the right, you can actually see some of these gigantic bugs on your commute. It was really fun. I actually kind of miss them. Okay, from beatboxing to bugs to more bugs, my goodness. Hawaii has a big soft spot in its heart for classic cars. There's all kinds of classic car collectors, even though they deal with things like the sun, the wind, and the salt air, um, and I'm sure they have different ways to deal with that. Here are some classic VW bugs. This was at Kapi'olani Park. They meet and they go for drives and they go to different car shows and what have you. We have a car show that happens, if I remember, uh, First Hawaiian Bank sponsors it. It's at the convention center in April. Yes, I've gone to go look at the cars. I admit it, I admit it. Um, and we have all kinds of just cool cars. You often see a lot of these collectible cars also in our parades. I think we have something insane, like at least 50 parades in Hawaii. If anyone who lives in Hawaii, can, uh, Waikiki, can tell you how many parades that we have um, because Kalakaua Avenue is closed frequently for those parades. This is where we have our um, notable people sitting and our beauty pageants people, queens waving and they get to sit at the back of the Corvettes and they've got the bugs and what have you. So I get a little thrill out of that. I live vicariously through seeing other people's beautiful cars um, and how they take care of it. It's pretty fab. Okay, Hawaii is a place where our laundry can look like Tibetan prayer flags. I thought this was uh, fantastic. So for those of you who think it's terrible to air out your dirty laundry, this is not dirty laundry, this is clean laundry. And we get to use the full advantage of our warm climate and our sun to air dry our laundry and be a little more green. So that's what I thought of. I saw, I saw that and I thought, it looks like a prayer flag. Hawaii is also a place where we have like this fabulous heron who is a local bird. 
Uh, you can just see these guys cruising in different places. This one here is at Neil Blaisdell. He's just sitting on a rock looking handsome. Sometimes you see them at the Ala Moana Beach Park. Sometimes you can see them at the Kawainui Marsh in Kailua. So keep your eyes peeled for these guys. They're very impressive. And these guys are usually uh, nocturnal birds um, and hunters. So moving right along from the heron to the egrets. We have nothing but egrets. These are cattle egrets. I don't know, some people say egrets and some say egrets. And uh, these are funny little birds. This is taken at the dog park behind Diamond Head. Uh, they're taking a bath in the sprinkler. And truth be told, when someone is mowing the lawn, like next door at the cemetery, they will actually chase and run after the lawn mower. It's just the darndest thing. I couldn't understand it whatsoever. So I looked it up, and this is what they like to do. They actually will chase machinery. I don't know what's going on in their little bird brain, but it is amusing doesn't cost a thing. Um, from egrets to love in the islands in the animal kingdom, here's some two tortoises. You gotta cue the berry white. They're getting it on. It's just nature, my friends. Don't be offended. Don't write your senator. They probably won't care. Uh, so <laughs> this is at the Honolulu Zoo. I think something about Hawaii gets these tortoises in the mood because I probably have seen this happen at least no fewer than five times. And usually you hear it before you see it. I am not going to make the sound for you. That I will make for you in person if you have coffee with me. But uh, it's, <laughs> it's an unforgettable sound. And what's even more amusing are parents trying to explain if they go there what's happening with the kids. My favorite thing was, Daddy, what are they doing? And the dad was like, uh, let's go see the chimpanzees. Smooth, <laughs> smooth transition there. <laughs> totally avoided altogether. Moving my cord. At the Honolulu Zoo, we also have this fine fellow. And he is an African desert dog. That's probably not his name. Uh, I'm going to have to do a little more research, but he's so handsome. And he goes back and forth on this little path. There's actually a pathway that is completely worn down from him running back and forth. And uh, this was the only time I had a chance to see him in action because every other time I've gone there, he's been sleeping. So um, he's pretty cool. You've got to see him. He's an African desert dog. And he's at the Honolulu Zoo. OK, do we have one more image to share before we wrap it up? being cued. Okay, I can deal with that. This means we have many more images. We might have to have part three. It was very ambitious to think we could get through 61 images, but what finer way to leave you with this image of grace, of beauty, and of aloha. This is our May Day Queen for 2013, and she is sharing her hula and her dance, and certainly her aloha. I hope you can feel her mana and her energy going through that ability to communicate and to share the rich culture of Hawaii. It's what keeps people coming back and it's what makes people stay. And I'm so proud to live here in Hawaii, trying on my own way to keep it pono, to keep it real, to keep it righteous. And I hope you have enjoyed this slideshow. I'm thinking there's a possibility maybe I'll put some of these images up on the Art of Life page. But take this link and send it to your friends. Send it to your friends who've moved from Hawaii. Send it to your friends who want to come to Hawaii, who want to visit, who want to move here, who want to move back. Um, watch it and think about the places that you've seen that are familiar or new to you and fall in love with Hawaii. And most importantly, take care of Hawaii because she does need stewardship and she needs our help and it's a collective effort to make all of these things happen from the energy of the people to the beauty of the land. I love Hawaii and I hope you do too. This is The Art of Life and I'm your host Willow Chang Alion, hoping you have a wonderful weekend and the rest of your days. Ciao, ciao.